Hello and welcome back to this new and updated series on Python for the digital humanities. In this video, we're going to be talking about something that you might not think is very important, but actually is, and that is numbers. We're going to be talking about two major types of numbers, integers and floats. And we're going to talk about why you, as a humanist, should actually care about numbers when your world revolves around texts. Believe it or not, you will find yourselves working with numbers more than you possibly could imagine. <laughs> and there's a couple different reasons for that. We're going to get into that in this video. Uh, first of all, I want to really talk about some of these kinds of numbers that we have right here. We've got integers and we have floats. If you don't remember from lecture number two, uh, integers and floats, while looking identical, are actually very different. Or, well, they can look identical. So here we've got integers 9 and 2, which have an object of a1 and a2, respectively. And we have floats b1 and b2, which are 1.0 and 2.0. And let's go ahead and just kind of change this to 1 and 2. Now, to us humans, these are identical numbers. 1 is equal to 1.0, but to a computer, these are fundamentally different. And that's because uh, decimal points are a little more difficult for computers to handle and calculate, for reasons I don't want to get into in this video, but it comes down to essentially how computers work on a binary basis of 0, 1, 0, 1. So what we have here, even though they look identical, are actually very different. While integers are what we call whole numbers, that is something without a decimal point, floats are numbers or floating numbers that actually have a decimal point, so 1.0, 1.1, etc. Oftentimes when you're working with data in Python, even for humanists, you are going to ha have to understand this fundamental difference and work with it. So the first thing I want to show you as we kind of go through this long list of things that we're going to talk about regarding numbers is how to convert a float into an integer and an integer into a float. This is going to be an essential skill that you're going to have to use constantly because a lot of the times our data is going to be in a float form and you need to get it to an integer form. And then the other thing I'm going to show you how to do is how to take a number that is a string. So let's just say C3 or C1 is going to be equal to 1 and convert that into either an integer or a float. Uh, because a lot of the times when you need to work with data, you gotta convert something that is a string, so something that's embedded in text and has a numerical value. This is a numerical string, and you have to convert that into an integer to process it better. So let's go ahead and start working with this now. So the first example I'm gonna do is how to convert an integer into a float. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is choose an arbitrary object name. So let's just say n1. And that's going to be equal to float a1. So what's going to happen here is it's going to go into memory when it creates this object, Python is. It's going to find a1, and it's going to use this float operator, and it's going to convert a1 into a float. So if I were to use the print function and print off n1, we would see we have 1.0. That is because Python has converted a1 into a float and created it as this new object, n1. Now we can do the exact same thing by going and creating n2 and making that equal to int int b1, which is going to, if you guessed, convert b1 a float into an integer, you would be right. So let's go ahead and do that. And you'll see that it's given us a 1 from a 1.0. Let's tackle the more common problem that you're going to have. And that's going to be the conversion of a numerical string into an integer or a float. Well, the way in which we're going to do that, if we want to make it into an integer, is we're going to say int c1. And, oh, we got it printed off <laughs> in 3. There we go. And we've got down here, as you can tell from our output, that output of one. Now, what if our string had a bunch of random text with it? What would happen if we did that? Well, we're gonna get this kind of a fun little error um, because ASD fast is not going to be an actual integer. 
So the way in which we can do this in Python, and I'm going to show this in a later video, is when we're working with more complicated text and we need to extract specific numbers from a text, we can do that with a, um, a function called is digit. But that's not going to be for this video. So we have this easy way to kind of convert things back and forth. And by the way, you can convert C1 into a float as well uh, by just using the float operator. So remember, when you want to convert something from an integer into a float or a float into an integer or a numerical string into a float, you're going to use this command float and open and close parentheses and whatever you want to convert in there. And we don't have to do this with objects. Let's take a new example. We're going to make n4 equal to int and we're going to make it an int from 1.9. We're going to print off n4. So it doesn't have to be an object that we've got already created. We can run it here. And if you notice, it's going to round down. It's going to just simply chop everything off right here and round down to one because that's the most, uh, that's the only part of the number there that is a whole number. It's not going to round up. So that's what we have there. I want to move now into some of the more uh, kind of, common uh, mathematical functions that you're going to uh, need to know. And these are going to be very similar to what you already know. And that's how to actually perform basic addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division on a set of numbers. So let's do print is going to be, and we're going to say, let's just say one plus oh, one plus one. And here, I'm going to go ahead and comment all of this out. So we're going to say 1 plus 1, and we're going to get 2. This is the way you perform addition in Python. And believe it or not, this is going to be very common, and I'm going to get to why this little tiny bit of information, addition in Python, is very useful. It's going to be useful for what are known as loops. Now, we're not going to get to loops until lecture number 9, but I promise you, I'll, I'll demonstrate real quickly why you're going to use this and how you're going to use it now so that you get a, a good basis in it. But I promise you, you will use addition more than you realize. So that's how you perform addition. If you want to do a 3 minus 1, you would simply change that plus sign to a minus and you'll get 2. And again, as you probably expect, if you did 3 times 2 with an asterisk, you'd get 6. So that's the basic addition, subtraction, and multiplication. Division, however, is a little different. We have a few different options we can do here. Oh, I probably should say also, in order to perform exponential multiplication, so powers, you have to use two asterisks. So three to the power of two, which we think of as three squared, three cubed, 27. You get the idea. So this is three to the power, exponential multiplication. Uh, division, though, is going to have a, a few more things that we have to be familiar with. So first of all, in division, you can just do regular division where you do three divided by three. And that's gonna be using the division symbol. And with this, you're gonna get 1.0. Fantastic. You can do things like six divided by three and you'll get 2.0. But in division, you've got two other options and you can see them over here. There's modulo and there's floor. Modulo is going to give you the remainder. So. 6 divided by 3, what is the remainder? The remainder is 0. But if we were to do 7 divided by 3, we would receive 1. And the reason for this is because when we divide 7 by 3, we can do that twice, and the remainder is 1. If we did 7 divided by 8, you'd have a remainder of 2. What that is doing is it's telling you the remainder after that division has taken place. The other option that we have is something called a floor. And so if we do floor, we represent that with two division signs. And we get the answer of two. The difference here is that floor is telling us how many times three can go into seven. So three can only go into seven two times. And the same thing with eight. But if we jump up to nine, we'll see that it's now three. So that's how those work. So I mentioned that you're oftentimes going to have to use, um, use this knowledge for loops. So here's an example of a type of loop that you're going to make on a regular basis. Um, 
So you're going to say something like i is going to be equal to uh, 10. And you'll say while, x, uh, while i is uh, less than 10. I'll get to that in just a second. Print i. This is a very basic loop, but one that actually is useful to know. Oh, <laughs> we're going to make i equal to 0 while i is less than 10. Oh, and you'll see that it just keeps on going. The reason why it's going to keep on going is because it's not going to change the object. So if we do i is equal to i plus 1, now you'll see that it runs through and it prints off. And this is why addition and understanding numbers is very important. Loops are a fundamental necessity of writing code. And the way in which you control loops is oftentimes by controlling integers to iterate across a, uh, a series of uh, t uh, tasks. We're going to get to that in lecture number nine. That's just a way to give you a heads up on what's kind of coming in the future and why you need to spend time learning about numbers. So let's talk about what happened here. Uh, if you notice, I said, well, I is less than 10. And so what I am doing there is I'm using a comparison operator right over here, number 13 on this list of things we're going to talk about. So what is a comparison operator? Comparison operator are those things you learned in second or third grade, like equal to, greater than, less than, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, and not equal to. I got a little cheat sheet over here for you. So uh, we have can, can do this in a couple different ways. We can do, uh, uh, let's do 10 is equal to uh, 10. There we go. Print 10 is equal to 10. And it's going to return a boolean. Remember that word, boolean, which is a true or false statement. If I were to say 10 is equal to 11, it's going to tell me false. This is the way you make equal then, not with one equal sign. Watch what happens if I do that. I get an error because it doesn't understand what's happening. The equal sign is used in Python to uh, tell Python that you are creating an object. In order to use uh, equal to, you need to use a double equal sign. Now, this sounds very straightforward. For some, whatever reason, whenever I'm writing my code, I oftentimes uh, make stupid, simple mistakes, as I think most of us do. And this is one of the things that I always slip up on is using a double equal sign. So try to always remember that a double equal sign is going to be equal to. So we can also use greater than, just like we do in regular uh, math that we learned in grade school. We can do less than, just like math in grade school. And you see, we're just kind of going through and changing these. We can do less than or equal to, and you should still get true. We can do greater than or equal to, and we'll get false. We can change that to 10, and you'll see that you know, I'll get true. Uh, and then the other thing you have to be familiar with, and this is just going to be memorization. This is true in most programming languages. A um, exclamation mark with an equal sign is going to be not equal to. The exclamation mark is not, and the equal sign is equal to. So if we run that, we're going to see false. So that's kind of the basis, uh, basics of, um, of integers in Python, and also kind of the basis for why you're going to need them. Now, what I encourage you to do is to go over to pythonhumanities.com and check out under part one, go to uh, lesson four, integers and floats, and you can kind of go through and perform some of the tasks that are on there, uh, watch the video again if you want to, and just kind of work through a coding exercise down at the bottom. This is going to be a very basic coding exercise that's going to cover everything that we talked about in this video. If you've watched this video, you remember what the difference between an integer and a float is. If you know how to do basic addition, uh, subtraction, multiplication, division, and you know how to convert things, uh, honestly, I would go ahead and just kind of move forward. We're going to be reinforcing everything we learned here in future videos as we start doing things like loops and conditional statements. And that's going to be coming up in just a few lectures. And that's when we get into the kind of fun stuff. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video. You found it useful. If you have, please like and subscribe down below. Thank you for watching this video. If you've enjoyed it, please like and subscribe down below and visit us at pythonhumanities.com.